First point is that it's not the government's job to either encourage or discourage. It's not the government's job. Anand, government has to make sure that it has a system in place which works. And the most glaring thing I found when I became, I've been housing minister I think for five years now. I think in September of 2017, nearly five years. We did not have a regulator. In and of itself, that was a position bordering on, I don't want to use too strong a word, it's, it's scandalous. One of the things that we keep hearing and we keep seeing when, when housing prices rise a lot, right? Uh, you have a bit of a problem in government. On the one hand, do you encourage that because a lot of, you know, an Indian household savings, disproportionate from anywhere else in the world, is the value of the house. On the other hand, your cities start pricing out innovation. People can't afford Mumbai, they can't afford Delhi, and they start living in the outskirts. Um, so somewhere, you know, I, 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 I want your view on this idea of do you encourage residential prices, real estate prices to, to rise the way they are? Should they, or, or would you rather they kind of be stagnant? Do you? I'm going to answer that question very clinically. I see some prominent builders sitting here also. So, First point is that it's not the government's job to either encourage or discourage. It's not the government's job. Anand, government has to make sure that it has a system in place which works. And the most glaring thing I found when I became I've been housing minister, I think, for five years now. I think in September of 2017, nearly five years. We did not have a regulator. In and of itself, that was a position bordering on, I don't want to use too strong a word, it's, it's scandalous. That a sector like construction, housing is part of that, which along with agriculture and perhaps textiles, these are the three largest sectors in terms of employment generation, in terms of contribution to the GDP, and I can go on, they're important. You didn't have a regulator. So what happened in that situation? I hope none of you will mind my saying what I'm going to say. What happened is, most home buyers are like me, they don't read the fine print. They go by market reputation. Somebody comes and says, a bad badia project, we're starting a brilliant project. So he said, yeah. And by the way, we are one of the few countries in the world where people start taking money from people because they're building a project. So it's possible. So the man takes your money and decides, decides 30 percent of the way through that he would rather invest in a land bank. So he starts buying land. He says, very good, I'll complete the project three months later or three, five years later. And he ends up buying land bank. But the only problem is if everybody starts buying land, then the land value also, you have more money chasing the same thing, so land prices drop. Suddenly the builder who had a successful model goes broke. So what did we do in RERA? I think it's good to understand this. First of all, when I became a minister, I was told, Ki ye, you know, it's too little, too late. I could write a book. There was an attempt to sabotage RERA both from the inside also. There were people who turned around and said, no, it's too little, you know, we need a stronger legislation. So my lawyer friends will, I don't know where the motivation is. Some builders would have said, yeah, let's go derail. Karo. So a large number of cases were filed against RERA. So the Delhi High Court or the Delhi the Apex Court directed all the cases to be taken up in the Mumbai High Court. And I had just become a minister and I started looking at these attentions, at these issues. I have a youngster who... Uh, was part of that RERA drafting committee um, and the best thing is the court threw it out, RERA is here, RERA is a roaring success, it has helped people in most places, it's also a dispute resolution forum. Now there are some issues which are outside RERA, for instance RERA means that if you take, start a project, 70% of the proceeds you take have to go into an escrow account, Anand, which can be only used for that project which is a very good thing. So the first time, things are doing. But projects have got delayed, especially in the people around Delhi. If you talk to a builder, he'll probably give you a very sensible explanation, that you didn't give land, you didn't give it, you didn't give it. But it's all being cleaned out now. 
I would like to come to a situation. So, am I happy when land prices go up? Well, I am first of all happy that the inventories are gone. I used to tell builders, why itni inventory lakke kya karoge? You've taken the loans. Many of them have gone bust. They also have problems because they have borrowed. So you have to look at their problem also. So I told him, kya karo? I said, why don't you reduce the price a little? No, a lot of people prefer to not reduce the price and keep high inventory. But I think all that is a th thing of the past. In some cities, Mumbai for instance, prices have gone up. Delhi, if you take out these two, three big projects which are problematic in the national capital region, you know, uh, big names, etc. They're, they're because people went to the uh, you know, NCLT, they went to the uh, Supreme Court directed operation. I think the real estate is doing very well. Is that something for which the government take can take the credit? I don't think so. But the government can take the credit, rightly, for bringing in a regulator, for making sure that the kind of practices or malpractices, etc., are now a thing of the past. And most important, today when you go and buy a property, most likely he will want all of it in a check. All of this thing. Yeah. Now, some of it is coming back. You can argue with me. Yeah. But you know, government is not the, uh, uh, you know, only agency which needs to reform. If people become willing partners to that. Indian uh, household, an Indian family pours all its money, 75% of whatever it has, into a house or land or, you know, some prospects for the future. Now, you have mentioned how the builders are gaming uh, the buyers, or have gamed the buyers. It, it once before RERA, before uh, RERA. Once Not before now. RERA, uh, so they did it. Now let me tell you how government is gaming people who have, who have property. Um, and uh, lots of people have said that I should ask you this. Uh, when somebody wants to sell their property, where maybe it's a piece of land, maybe it's a little building, maybe it's their house, they do it because they need the money. Now, they find a buyer and they tell the buyer, you have to pay the stamp duty at the circle rate. At the circle rate. Fine. The buyer says fine. This guy says fine. Now, this person might be selling their property because they need the money. It might be a distress sale, it might be something. Now, they are saying that you pay the stamp duty at the circle rate, but we will, they negotiate with, we will take this much money, about 70%. But, uh, Hardeep Ji, let me tell you that I have seen this, that the regulator says, aha, the difference between the 70% and the 100% stamp duty is the black money that you have taken. Please, sir, let me finish. And not only are you to give us both buyer who and the seller, you must each give us the 30% of the black money that you have, mythical black money that you've taken, and pay interest and penalty on this black money that you have taken. Sir, let me tell you, you mentioned just now that now it's all in, in check. And uh, after demonetization, uh, the, your government has claimed that black money has more or less gone from the system, even if it has not gone. I'm saying there are some of us who haven't seen 10 rupees in black money, but we pay capital gains tax of 21% and we pay, let's say, 30% in black money that we have not taken. What kind of gaming is this? First of all, let me say, even at the risk of shocking you, I entirely agree with you. I agree with you. You are you're, you're not only my neighbor, you are not only my neighbor, you are not only my neighbor, but I think I empathize with the problem you are saying because I am also at the receiving end of this problem. First of all, who sets circle rates? It's the state government. So what have I done? No, no, I have not sat back. I told Mr. Kejriwal, by the way, there was a time Mr. Kejriwal and I used to talk regularly. In fairness, if I remember correctly, he said ki, till a particular date, 20% will come. Kar okay? But my colleagues in my ministry who are sitting here will bear witness. I have been talking to all state governments. I have been talking to state governments. I have been saying, you are actually penalizing yourself if you don't have realistic circle rates. Now, why was this circle rate created? High ones. Because you had a situation earlier where, you know, a property which was uh, worth 400 crores, I mean, I, I'm going hypothetically, was sold for a song. So people turned around. So one, one mistake does, I agree with you. So what have, what have we done? What have we done? 
what I am going to do, I'll tell you. I have been, I have been pressing this point for rationalization of circle rates for a long time. I have even asked for us to examine whether, you know, because why, what's happening? There's no regulator in this. You are referring to a department which collects the revenue from the sale. If you sell below the thing, they'll say, so I also said another thing, Acha yaar, you go ahead and carry out a transaction. How many such properties will any agency acquire and do what with it? Because at the end of the day, the market determines what the value of a flat is. All right. Some people bought those flats very low and they went up very high, but then there were question of, you know, another floor, FIR is not being used. So I'm familiar with that. What I want to assure you is that I am fully con conscious of what the problem is. Maybe this is not an area, play, a forum where I can, you know, because we'll need a half an hour, I'll tell you. The responses also have been very different. For instance, in Maharashtra, uh, not now, but earlier when we had uh, the previous government, if I remember correctly, they rationalized the FAR also. Uh, which some of you will probably remind me, they made it three for uh, one FSI, and... Yeah. Huh? called FSI Maharashtra. FSI, FSI. Maharashtra. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it took off. So I cite that, I mean, you are the right person to ask, yeah, uh, not FAR, but FSI, yeah, Floor Space Index. There we are trying to do it in a number of things. We are trying to encourage the urban local bodies to raise finances, because what happens, they don't charge revenue where they have to, so there's neglect. So I keep saying, follow Swachta, follow all the other things, and let us go for a rationalization. But it's a very high priority as far as I'm concerned, because I see... If people sell and buy properties correctly, not through, what is it called, power of attorney. Power of attorney, you don't know what to do. So the state is depriving itself of revenue. So I'm entirely with you on what you're saying.